this is the 2024 Yamaha R3. Makes a comeback after it was discontinued back in 2018. And now comes with this all new design, especially at the front, which I really, really like. And complementing that is, of course, the upside down forks, which have made a world of difference in terms of the way it looks, gives it a much more sportier look. I'm pretty sure it would also make a big difference in terms of the way this rides and handles. So without further ado, let's go and find out. This is the familiar 321cc parallel twin liquid cooled DOHC setup. Makes the same 42 PS, 29.5 Nm of torque. And man, does it love to rev. <laughs> It only gets going after 8,000 RPM. Yeah, but once it gets going and gets in its stride, it is really involving to ride. It's from 8,000 to 11,000. That's where you want to keep it. That's the power band. That's when the motorcycle really comes alive. That engine is also complemented by this really good gearbox which is an absolute delight to operate. And another reason why you are so confident of keeping the throttle pin as long as you dare is because of the phenomenal braking performance that the RC brings to the table. I think this is easily one of the best braking setups in this segment and the crazy part is the actual setup is very simple. At the front, you have a 298mm disc which is mated to a two-pot axial caliper. But the way it works with uh, the Dunlop tires gives you really good stopping performance. I think another factor which has made a big difference in improving the braking performance is of course the upside down forks. They have transformed the way the R3 handles. I think dynamically speaking, this is the best the R3 has ever been. They are a lot more rigid. They don't flex as much. So when you're really pushing the bike, when you're braking hard, when you're pushing the motorcycle into the corner, uh, it gives you a lot more support, a lot better feedback and much better stability, especially during quick change of direction. also at maximum lean into the corners which means you can get the best out of the Dunlops. I also feel the upside down folks have also helped with uh, improving the front end feel which again boosts your confidence. If you remember the old R3 the front setup was very very soft which would prevent you from really exploiting what the R3 can do in corners and now it's history because this setup works really well. And the good part about this setup is also the fact that it's not too far on the sportier side. It also does quite well when you want to relax and are perhaps looking at the RC as a sports tutor. Because once you dial it in, it's actually quite supple as well. I mean, don't get me wrong, the rear shock is definitely on the firmer side, but uh, it is well damped which makes riding on not so perfect roads that much easier and comfortable. The same goes for the ergonomics as well. It's the same familiar riding position. You're sitting lower down, the seat height is just 780 mm. The riding position is nice and upright, which is comfortable for longer hours in the saddle. Even the saddle itself is decently well padded. But on the highways, in terms of the engine, you don't really have much low end which means uh, if you're riding in a higher gear, you will have to downshift for those quick overtakes. And also in terms of vibrations, yeah, they creep in around 5000 RPM. You feel them first on the pegs, then onto the handlebar as the revs climb. But the good news is in the higher revs, they are not as bad and you can easily cruise on this at around 125 all day long. Now in the city, you have the same advantages. This is the lightest motorcycle in class. 
It also has a very short wheelbase which makes it very easy to handle really quick on its feet. But there are three main problems. First is there's barely any low end torque. And so in terms of tractability, it actually pulls quite well even at 2000 RPM in a higher gear. The problem is there's barely any torque for you to really go ahead and make that overtake. So you will have to invariably downshift quite a bit. And secondly, there's the heat. So it actually doesn't heat up too much. Uh, you can feel the fan kicking in even when the temperature gauge is just the halfway mark. Problem is that heat is directed straight onto your legs. So that makes it kind of uncomfortable if you get stuck in chocolate block traffic. And lastly, I cannot believe that the R3 in this day and age still doesn't get a slipper clutch which not only means the rear wheel hops around quite a bit under aggressive downshifts but also is quite heavy to operate which can be quite a pain especially when you're riding around in the city. So to summarize, the new R3 is undoubtedly a much better motorcycle than its predecessor. The upside down folks have completely changed dynamically for a much better motorcycle. The only problem with the R3 is the fact that it comes to India as a completely built unit which means it has a very hefty price tag of 4.65 lakhs. And that makes it that much more difficult to justify even to the most ardent Yamaha and R3 fans especially when you have the Aprilia RS457 in the same segment which is far cheaper and out equips the R3 in every possible way. Barring the brakes and perhaps the reliability and after sale service which is unknown, the R3 has absolutely no defense against the Aprilia. With the Ninja 500, it still had a shot, but uh, with the Aprilia in the picture, unfortunately, as good as this is to ride, it is too expensive for anyone to take seriously unless Yamaha cut down the price and make it a lot more accessible. <music>